How do you begin to believe something that you don't believe when the proof is there? Abraham, it's true. This is the reality. This is what we've got. This is how it's going. My eyes are not deceiving me. My ears are not deceiving me. This is the truth of my reality. How do I create other than that? And we say, you're really upon something important if you're asking that question because most people offer almost all of their vibration in response to what they are observing. Esther would say to us in the beginning, but Abraham, it's true. It's true. Shouldn't I give my attention to what's true? Isn't that what I've been taught all of my life? And we say, we understand what you're going for here, Esther. But here's the thing. A thing is only true because someone is focused upon it until it became a reality. We would use a different criteria, not is it true, but does it feel good to me when I think about it? Is it something that I desire? And if it is something that you desire, then give it more and more and more of your attention. But if it is not something that you desire, giving it more attention only makes it more solid in your experience. You see how it works? How do thoughts turn to things anyway? Have you ever wondered about that? Do you see any pipelines trucking in new fuel from other planets? New mines are being dropped from the sky? How is it? How is it that thoughts are turning to things? Thoughts are turning to things through focus. Through focus and reception and response to that reception. That's how thoughts turn to things. That's how your economy evolves. That's how everything evolves. That's how the cells of your body evolve. Every part of evolution, which is what your eternalness is all about, is about thoughts turning to things. And so that's what we want to talk to you about. We want you to begin addressing yourself more vibrationally rather than physically. Because the physical parts of you, the physical things that you are giving your attention to, those are already manifested. That's already done. That's like gum that you've chewed the flavor out of. That really is not where you want to put your attention. You want to put your attention upon where you are going. So when life shows you that you want something, you want to be more forward looking toward the evolving and the unfolding of what you're asking for rather than standing where you are, sometimes in the absence of what you want, justifying or defending why you should get more of what you want because you don't have it. Every subject is two subjects. It's like a stick that has two ends of it. And on one end is the absence of what you want and on the other end is the presence of what you want. So the question that we're asking you is, when you ask for more money, where's your gut? Where's your emotion? Are you standing in a feeling of desperation? Are you standing in a feeling of disappointment? Or are you standing in an attitude of appreciation and anticipation? Where's your vibration relative to the things that you're asking for? Are you more of a vibrational match to what you want? Or are you more of a vibrational match to its absence? Are you a more of a vibrational match to the problem or the solution? To the question or the answer? Well, we can tell you the answer. You can tell by how things are unfolding. However it's turned out so far, that's what you're a vibrational match to. It's always that way. You can tell what you're offering vibrationally by what you're living, by what you're surrounded by. So here's what we want you to hear that may be new for you. And it really is the answer to getting past beliefs that don't serve you. A belief is only a thought you continue to think. That's all. A belief is just a thought that you continue to think. Now, we want to help you let yourself off the hook a little bit. You continue to think those thoughts because law of attraction really helps you to continue to think those thoughts. You can't think far past the thoughts that you're already thinking. So there's no hope for you. <laughs> We've enjoyed this interaction immensely. Good luck with all of that. Think of us. We're living happily ever after. But there is a way that you can not so much bridge your belief immediately. You might be able to bridge a belief if you could surround yourself with other people who believe in the advantage that you have not yet given to yourself. So you may be able to bridge your beliefs if you had someone around you who knows answers to what you're looking for and you don't know the answer, but they do and they talk to you every day and you get to watch them in their life and eventually you could come to believe because they believe it and they're living it. You could change your beliefs a little bit. That's how most humans are bridging their beliefs or changing their beliefs. But there's a much easier way. So we have some questions for you before we give you this important thing, the answer to all your hopes and dreams. Do you accept that you are more than this physical personality that you know as you? Yes. So if this inner being exists, and we promise you your inner being does exist, 
And since your inner being does exist and your inner being is standing in complete knowing of what you're asking for, in other words, knowing, seeing the vibrational version of it and knowing that this vibrational version, just like a seed in the ground, can grow to the full manifestation that you're looking at, the seed to the abundance you're looking for, the seed to the physical wellness, the seed to the relationships that you want, the seeds to all things that you have been asking for. Since your inner being is there with those seeds, do you believe that your inner being is there with the beginning of what you're asking for? And do you understand that now you've got to do something about letting this vibrational version be realized by you? Your inner being doesn't have the right or the wherewithal to assert anything into your experience. You got to sync up with it. So you have to become a believer of the vibrational reality before the vibrational reality can come into your experience. We wrote a whole book about it, a couple of books about the vortex and about how everything you want is there. And so many of you followed us to a certain point, but it became annoying to you. All right, Abraham, I get it. Everything I want is in the vortex and you want me over there at the doorway of my vortex so that I can get what's in there. But just tell me one thing, Abraham, how do I get the money out of the vortex and into the bank? <laughs> Enough of this vibrational version already. I'm sort of sick of hearing about the vibrational version. I live in the real world. I want it to come out into the real world where it can be part of my manifestation. And we say, it is already a manifestation, but feel the difference between a manifestation, a manifestation is whatever you're living and feeling in, in any moment, and every moment is a manifestation, but feel the difference between manifestation and your realization of it. Esther's pen was in her purse. It was there, but her realization of it wasn't. So it might as well have not been there because she didn't have hold of it. You see what we're getting at? And so, so much of what you want is just like that pen in Esther's purse. You're walking around with it all day, every day. It's just a reaching in and pulling out. That's all that's required. But because you believe it isn't there, you don't do that. So... Do you believe that there is a vibrational version of what you want that has progressed in varying degrees, some of it ripe and ready for you to experience? So if the answer to that is yes, then you really are ready for what we are encouraging in a very powerful way these days. You're ready to deliberately put yourself into the receiving mode where you can receive the impulses about it. And this is different than bridging beliefs because bridging beliefs takes time. Bridging beliefs means you have to take hold of a belief that you've got that is in defiance of something that you want and make it no longer in defiance of something that you want. Have you ever talked to anyone? You believe one thing and they believe another thing and you're talking to each other and you both wish to convince the other. And after an hour or two or three or four or five or six or 10 or 20 or years of interacting with them about that, they just stand strong in what they believe and you just stand strong in what you believe and no headway is made in convincing the other. You know about that? You've got that exact thing going on inside of you where I want this, but I want this, but... But, 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 you've got beliefs that keep your desires from being realized by you and it's unnecessary. So what do you do about it? Do you want to argue with yourself for hours or weeks or months or years? Or would you like a suggestion for a much simpler route? Yes. We thought you'd say that. <laughs> when you quiet your mind, you stop all thought. And when you stop all thought, all beliefs, ooh, you're really going to like this. So we're going to start in a different place because we really want you to hear this. Imagine a cork floating on the water. And let's just say that this up here on the surface is alignment with your source, pure positive energy. Now you can hold that cork under the water and let's call that negative emotion. Let's call that beliefs that don't serve you. But when you let go of it, it's going to bob right back up there to the surface. So when you meditate and you quiet your mind, you bob back up to the surface. And when you bob back up to the surface, when your vibration rises because you're not holding it down with things that your inner being knows are not true. When hatred and fear are disengaged and in their absence, you just move right back up into the natural love and pure positive energy that is you. That's what we call the receiving mode, which means now you are at the doorway of your vortex. Now, in that absence of contradictory beliefs, the beliefs of your inner being are dominant. In fact, they are only. They are only. When you meditate and quiet your mind and allow your vibration to rise, now you are only 
the frequency of your inner being. Now think about what we've been talking about already here today. So here's your inner being and this vibration and here's you and this vibration and everything you feel is about the mix of that. If you are in tune with your inner being, you feel wonderful. If you're not, you feel less wonderful to varying degrees all the way over to awful. But when you meditate and quiet that part of your vibration and your vibration rises, now you are at the doorway of your vortex. Now you are in the receiving mode. Now what your inner being knows about everything and what your inner being knows mostly is about is you. Now it is your knowledge too. And so now ideas begin to flow to you through your path of least resistance. So when you are in meditation and a thought comes to you, that thought is a thought worth listening to because it's not from this receptive mode of fear. It's from this receptive mode of knowing who you are, what you want, what's in your vortex, what's already been allowed by you to play out. Your inner being knows where you stand in relationship to everything you want and knows your path of least resistance to guide you to it. Isn't that nice? So you're at the doorway of your vortex and you might not be ready yet to translate into words like Esther is doing here, but you'll receive impulses, maybe an impulse to do something or an impulse to call someone. But then you're going to get back into your day. And as you get back into your day and you start observing what's going on in your day, you're probably going to reintroduce more resistance back into your experience. So the closer to meditation, the more likely you are to more clearly receive the answers that you've been listening for. The further into the day you get, the more you're going to start behaving like you usually do. But can you feel how, after a few days of this, or weeks of this, or even years of this, where you quiet your mind and tune to the frequency of who you are, that you could become more guided by that broader perspective? Esther's been asking herself a lot. Now, she's been receiving us since 1985. That's a long time. And yet, even today, she will ask herself, as a thought comes, because your receiver is always on, isn't it? As a thought comes, she will ask herself, where did that thought come from? Now, if the television's on, it's pretty obvious <laughs> where the thought came from. But when she's just taking her walk, or when she's in the shower, or when she's moving about in her day, and thoughts come, as they do all day, she's been stopping and saying, where's that thought coming from? What receiving mode am I in? What train of thought led to that? Was I in the receiving mode of worrying about things or was I in the receiving mode of appreciating things? And in time, you will come to realize that you have a very broad view helping you out. Some years ago, Jerry and Esther were in San Antonio. They live outside the city limits. And they'd gone into Bernie, the little town where they pick up their mail. And they couldn't get to the post office because there was a flood. The Cibolo Creek had overrun its banks and the post office was flooded. They couldn't get in. And so they went home and they immediately called their friends who live in San Antonio, which is downstream. And they own a ranch in San Antonio, a thousand acres. And that Cibolo Creek runs right through their ranch. And Esther called and said, the Cibolo Creek is out of its banks up here. The post office is blocked off. We couldn't even get in. And it's headed your way. And so their friends were able to get the tractors out of the pastures and move the cattle and the horses out of the pasture. And as the creek made its way there in the next half hour or so, everything went well for them. And then Pat called and said, it sure is nice to have a friend upstream. And that really is the point that we want to make with you. You have infinite intelligence adoring you and upstream and aware of you and everything that is important to you.